living my best life. I told y'all, I'm living my best life. I made a couple L's with my best friends. Turned all my L's into lessons. You see the whip pulling up, it's like skirt. Dreams pulling up, it's like skirt. Great Friday, UT family. I know it's been a minute. Um, not going on. Um, some of you know, if you know me personally, I'm actually preparing for upcoming surgery. And, you know, just kind of been trying to enjoy my evenings a little bit before I'm laid up for six weeks. So, but this channel today is just going to be kind of me relaxing on a Friday. Um, had a nice little evening. Me and hubby just coming back from a nice little evening in Arlington on the rooftop. So your girl's a little tipsy. But the subject matter of the day is that I'm going to talk about, and it's no disrespect to anybody, but I'm going to put it on the table, is how there is sexism in the reptile community. So, um, Keeping in mind that, you know, just like with all animals, everybody has a specific interest in what they love. I am a lover of many reptiles in this household. But in the last year, I became an avid lover, as you know, of the reticulated python. And often just in communication, um, and really not in the reticulated python groups as much, but in other groups, um, You'll find that the value of the knowledge of the woman is less respected than the knowledge of the man. And for me, you should deal for a minute. I know I look young, but I am a grandmother. So I've been doing reptiles for 30 years. So I don't like to attack anybody's intelligence because I do believe that you could be a 17 year old. 27 year old and know as much about a specific animal than I do but I typically know what I know when I know what I know I stick to what I know um, from my experience um, reticulated pythons believe it or not as much as I've had mastered them they're new to me however I've mastered them I'm good with them so if there's a lot that I learned that I can debunk from what people told me I would experience. Um, I've never been bitten ever from any reptile in 30 years. But um, particularly, I those who know when I first got my golden child was for sure that that was going to be the first reptile that bites me. I've learned to respect them. Um, same thing with my berm. My berm was a hissy fit when I first got it. She always hissed. But if you picked it up, she was fine. So I'm very comfortable with what I know from experience. And I would never let anyone challenge my experience. It's like I would never, it challenges anyone else's experience. So I always say that your experiences with your reptiles or your experiences with your reptiles. So what I'm about to do now is take out one of my reticulated pythons and I'll show you guys who I came home and my tiger pod has made a complete mess in his enclosure. <laughs> and he wants to get out of it. So I am going to take him out. Got his little tub ready over here. Um, whenever my reptiles actually poop in, not poop and have to, like in this case, move around in the feces because I wasn't home, they always get a bath um, when I'm cleaning that enclosure. Um, so he's ready to go get in the tub. So. I'll be back and more on the topic. Stay tuned. So, some reptiles love to take baths. Most of my retics love it. They'll actually go into the water themselves. The tiger pod is not a fan as much. Once he's in there, he enjoys it. He'll swim around. But getting them in is a challenge. So, you will see that it's not um, as easy to get him in as some of you have seen videos of my golden child going in on her own or the Motley Mochino going in on their own. But the pod, although he, if you see him, he's like, get me the hell out of here because it's shitty in here. <laughs> um, he's gonna give up a little fight to get at. So stay tuned. Oh, you 
You're dirty. You need a bath. Ooh, you made a big mess, Mr. Cole. Come on, baby. Come on, dirty boy. But that's the easy part. The hard part is gonna be what you see next. Me transferring him into this tub for this bath. So he is really, really fast. So watch this. Normally my son would be down here to put the top on as I put him in. But Michael is taking a bath himself right now. So I'm gonna have to do this on my own, okay? Water's still kind of warm to me, so I'm going to cool it off a little bit. But you guys see my pretty baby? Say, rolling in dookie and all, I am good looking. So this one is one of my, so all of you know, up into my last retic, all of my reticulated pythons were from Jim Jolly. Um, I believe this was my second one from Jim Jolly. And I am a huge fan of the job he played, right? <laughs> um, and because I think my experience with reticulated pythons come from him. And remember, remember, I was new to them through him. So my experience from with them come in a good way because I believe of how he actually um, breeds and socialize his animals before sale. Sale. So, for example, I was told my tiger pot would be the meanest retic that I have, and he's actually one of the most patient retics. Has never, ever, 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 ever shown any signs of any negative persona. Um, his feeding response is easy to turn off. He knows the difference. Um, anyone can hold him. Uh, he's just a good, good guy. Hi there, Miss Yuko. Hi there. Um, not head shy at all, as you can see. You can touch his head all you want. Um, he's just such a sweet baby. And he's growing. Um, his enclosure is the next one to be completed. It's actually done. We've been, the, the glass for his enclosure um, has been on back order. So it's hold up the finish of his build. Um, so my enclosures come from either the big enclosures, the customs, which is also, you'll see the customs in the ballroom too that I have over there. Um, they even come from Cryptic Creations or Evo Reptiles. I love them both. I think overall Cryptic Creations is more creative or customizing the enclosure. But the overall love and quality of an enclosure, I would say it's my Evo. So I love them both. Pick, pick whichever one you like. Um, so check the water. Um, check the temp on the water. Of course, I always keep a temp done. Still pretty warm. So what I'm gonna do is let him kind of hang out for a while before I put him in the water, let the water cool, cool off some, and we'll be back. So he's hanging out. This one always trying to come home before I clean. So he's hanging out for the moment. He see his mommy right here. You'll see him put his, his head right near me. Hey there, Mr. Cole. He's such a good boy, but you're not ready to go home yet. You still gotta take a bath. So as you can see in his tub, this is what he did. This is baby. He is on my arm, y'all. Y'all, look at him. Mystical. Can you see him? Not yet, baby. You gotta take a bath. I know you hate taking a bath, but you're gonna take a bath. All right? So my son decided to take the pod out front for a little while while I do this video. So, subject at hand. 
I mentioned that, you know, sometimes in the reptile business, you know, a lot of times people talk about um, how race is a factor, how, you know, let's just keep it real. Sometimes um, the black reptile owner is not respected in the hobby. My experience is a little bit more different. I feel it's like the woman is not respected. And, you know, I'm not going to go on um, into details. But what, what I will say is, is that um, some of us have been doing this longer than some of you kids have been born. And it's where I won't, what I won't do is go back and forth with children in the hobby. And there's no disrespect. Um, there's um, one, one kid um, that's in my reptile group, um, Trey, I'll shout him out because I really respect him. Who knows a lot about the green tree python so I respect him um, be, and I respect it not only because he knows a lot about him but I don't know enough about him so I'm one of them people that if it's not my expertise like them damn tarantulas it's not my expertise and I will reach out to the people who have proven to be experts in that field but there are so many resources that I have um, recently on a thread um a conversation came up about boas now i own three boas all of my boas are pretty nice boas but i have a avid passion for the reticulated python so will i spend five six thousand dollars for reticulated python yes i will um in fact one of my goals is to spend twenty five thousand dollars for a burmese pie um, well, I want it to come down to 20. So when that price comes down to 20, I'm willing to purchase it. Um, I find myself in challenging conversations with people who haven't invested in this hobby as I, I, I have. Um, so without saying an amount, I will say that I'm blessed and that the money that I spend on reptiles is money that has been saved and it's accounts ex so totally separate from any other expense that I have in my life. So when people say things like, well, make sure you got space for them, I have plenty of that. When people say, and when I will say people, when men say, because it's normally men, w women normally respect because they can see what I'm doing. Um, when men say, um, you have to make sure that you understand the beast you're getting into. Not a weak woman. Um, I respect the reptile. I respect all of my animals because I feel as though that a corn snake and you have, needs them as much respect as a reticulated python, if you ask me. So a snake is a snake to me, um, except when you get into those venomous ones, and that's a whole different story. Because if a reticulated python any day choose to possess or show a different demeanor than I am used to on any given day, chances are I would survive. Where with the minimus ones, one mistake that can take you away from here or de definitely damage your quality of life for the rest. And I'm not willing to sacrifice, as I said before. So, but for the animals that I do show passion for and that I own, I will not bring an animal in my house that I'm that afraid of that I could never handle. So even with the green tree python, which is an animal that you really shouldn't handle, right? From every knowledgeable person that I'm told. But sometimes I have to take him out his enclosures for different and rare reasons. It's very rare. It's totally unlike these reticulated pythons come out almost daily, if not daily. Um, my, my boas, my ball pythons. But the green tree python, because again, I respect the nature of the snake. I don't take him out a lot. Um, but when I do, I'm not afraid to take them out. It's just I'm prepared to take them out. So there's a difference. But, you know, going back to my point, you know, I would just say to the men in the hobby that, you know, the woman may look like a woman, but we've been doing this too. Um, and we're strong in it. We're deep in it. Financially, some of y'all can't touch the way I am. I'm just going to keep it real when it comes to being able to financially afford any animal that I have. It's the reasons that I, wake, I can wake up any given day and say, this is what I want today. If I choose not to buy animals because I choose not to spend the money in my reptile account, I have one of those. I, I, I raise these funds 
since the youngster because I knew that once my children became grown out of the house, um, I knew when I bought this house, you know, people say, why would you buy so much a house? And it's just you and your husband and your one child, which is, you know, y'all all know Michael, you know, Michael's only home because of his disability. Um, because I knew what I wanted to do. I knew that my dogs were important for space, so that whole yard back there, I knew that it was gonna be for them. I knew that um, every bedroom that I had, whether it was vacant or not, would be utilized either for clothes or shoes or whatever the overflow for me was. Um, and I knew that the extra bathrooms, I would probably house certain reptiles in them. I knew that um, the garage, I would never park a car in because we got a long, big driveway um, in the garage because I don't like garages. I watch Lifetime movies. Women normally get got in garages, so I never liked them. So when I saw that this house had one, first thing that came to my mind is one day that I was going to want um, lizards. I didn't know they were going to be tables that would take over the garage, but it ended up being tables. Um, I knew that there were certain large snakes that I was interested in, and once I became 100% comfortable that I would purchase them, and there you go. Um, every reticulated python right now that's in the tub behind me, you'll see some of them right behind me their babies it's one in the other room my um golden child cow is in there in the room with my other snakes um all those animals already have enclosures being built and i pre-order everything because you know regardless of who the vendor is everybody is always behind on building enclosures so i like it for when it comes to their point where my animals are ready to transfer over that they're able to if the enclosures get ready sooner i've been very successful as i said before with transferring them over into their um larger enclosures at the size that they are i didn't have them had to wait until they got full grown so i am um respected by those i'm mean, including my family my family knows my investment into this but i think that sometimes in my experience i experience less of the racial bias in this community and more of the sexism in this community uh, and my tolerance normally gets shorter with the sexism than it does the racism especially when people start talking about money my husband has gifted me a few snakes because um, he knows i love them but he knows i can afford any animal that i want any given day <laughs> so you're, you're talking to a different woman um, i'm not putting down deposits I'm purchasing my animals when I want it. You know, how Beyonce say, if I see it, I want it. <laughs> you know, I just go out and get it. Um, it's evident that the thought process is, is that if you are a woman in this um, hobby, that you're not even mentally or financially prepared for the challenges of the hobby. I'm more than. My, my animals don't want for anything at all, ever. I have two freezers stacked for food, always. So when I go out next month, um, I don't have to go shopping. Um, when I go to reptile shows, it's normally not to buy animals. I never buy my reptiles from um, reptile shows. It's to buy supplies or I definitely get my feeders. I always meet my feeder breeder um, at the reptile shows. But, um, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. You know, brothers, respect the sister in this hobby because we're doing it. And some of us are doing it on a level that you can't imagine. And some of us are doing it it's even greater. Um, if I wanted to own a whole facility of reptiles, I could. It's just not where I'm at in life right now. Um, however, this house is pretty much reptile filled, um, at least on the level that I am on now. Um, I continue to take over different rooms. It started off with one room and now it's three plus the garage and plus the bathroom. So <laughs> um, uh, eventually um, another room is going to be transferred over. And my goal is one day is to have all my retics on one level, all of my boas on one level and all of my ball pythons on another level and the corn snakes. I only have one corn snake. I have no interest of getting any more colubrids. Um, they're just, I love my corn snake, but they're not my um, favorite species. So. There you go. I said it. No one take offense to this. I'm just putting it out there because y'all know I just keep it real because it's the only way that I swirl. So there you go. 
Everybody have a good one. Please like, subscribe. I never say it enough. Like, subscribe, and share. Um, there's so much content that um, I provide. Um, even if you go back and look at some of my oldest, I'm questioning a lot about certain things and I can just say to people, hey, check out this video because I've covered that subject. So there you have it. So Michael just bought my pod back in. He's gonna attempt to put a mint on his own, but it'll never work. So I'm gonna go and help him. That pot is fast. I can get the bigger ones in that water the quicker that I can get him in here. So there you have it, guys. So thank you so much. Um, again, um, I'm gonna try to do a couple more videos before I go down in June. Um, my surgery is June one. Um, and I want to make sure that when I come back on camera, I don't look like I just had surgery. <laughs> so. I probably definitely won't have um, in a couple weeks, but I'll get back with you guys. Talk to you later. Peace.